Welcome to the science of everyday life. While visiting the Everyday Life neighborhood, you will learn and experience how daily lives are shaped by science. It is in the air we breathe, the food we eat, the cars we drive, the sports we play, and the household items we use, and much more. Visit this neighborhood if you want to learn about how science affects food, sports, energy, safety, transportation, and more. Hi, I'm here with Uva in the Science of Everyday Life, where we're going to ask him some questions. So Uva, what do you do here in the Science of Everyday Life? Basically, I'm the manager for this tent. It's the uh, uh, science of food tent of the Science of Everyday Life neighborhood. What can you learn in this event? Well, the Science of Everyday Life points out that there is actually science in everything we do, we use, um, in terms of whether you start with shampoo, there was science involved in figuring out what doesn't burn your scalp and still just cleans your hair, things like that, over generations of people that try to get clean hair, right? So uh, science is actually not something that has only given us our food as we have it today, but continuously improving food. So my favorite part is really the Science City as a community of an event to learn in a fun way about scientific things. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Ilva. Thank you, Haley. Heifer International is a nonprofit organization, and what we do is we teach people all around the world how to be self reliant. We want them to have a sustainable future, okay? So we teach them this via farming. We teach them how to raise animals, grow crops, be kind to the earth, but they have to give back. In other words, all the education they get from us, they also give to their neighbor, along with the firstborn female calf or firstborn female kid. And the gift keeps moving through the town. So it, you're not just helping one family, you're helping a whole community. Now, how I get children involved in this, I have to make it interesting. So I decided, let's do edible bugs, okay? Because in third world countries, a lot of times, bugs are the only source of protein. So it's not like we're trying to change culture and go in and tell them, don't eat, don't eat bugs. We bring them chickens, we bring them cows, we bring them goats for the milk and the eggs. And we say, you might want to try this with your very young. Still eat your bugs if you want, but maybe you want to market them. And if they sell their bugs, they can make money to send their kids to school. So you see, we're not teaching them just to um, have the food for dinner at night. It's think about the future. Make money off of what you are doing. Send your kids to school. They've got to have an education to be successful.